Welcome back to avforums.tv and I'm still with uh, Laurie Finchin at THX and uh, we're going to talk about some new trends in terms of speakers and subwoofers and audio. Um, so what is the latest new trend? Well in, in our business we, we tend to get a lot of feedback from our customers and installers and, we, and a recurring theme in all this is probably the most universal theme in the world. I want a really good system in my home but I'm sort of under some restrictions from the family as to how big and what I put where. And so we've seen a big movement towards uh, freestanding speakers, first of all, going onto a bookshelf and now actually going in wall. And the, it's also the logical place to put the subwoofer. It's the logical place, but it's probably the worst place because if you put a speaker in a wall, a couple of things happen. You hear more of the wall than you do of the subwoofer. And one of the reasons is that you put a speaker in a wall and it compresses the air behind the, the, the uh, dry rock, uh, dry, uh, sheet rock, and that vibrates and you hear that, so it goes off like a drum panel. As if that wasn't bad enough, the speaker itself bounces backwards and forwards on the wall and that sets it going. So it's really a, um, a, a barrier to good bass quality. So we took that to heart and thought, well, maybe we could come up with a scheme for g dealing with these two problems. Well, the obvious way to deal with the problem of compressing the air in the, in the cavity in the wall is to make a speaker that goes in a box. But unfortunately, in US dry walls, you've only got about three and a half inches, so the wall is not very thick. So you've got to have a very shallow subwoofer. And secondly, you've got to make sure it doesn't vibrate the wall. So we got to thinking about this, and what we came up with was an idea more, more based on, on uh, uh, petrol engines. Uh, you, one of the things, if you have multiple cylinders, we have a flat four or something, you have to range so that they give lots of power, but they don't actually vibrate the system. So think of this. This is, um, this may not look like a subwoofer, but it's one element. If you take enough of them, you have what you want. So what you have here is two small enclosures here, one here and one there, and two drivers in them that face one another. So what's happening here is we take two drivers like that, like two pistons in an engine, they go like that. The sound comes out, that comes forward, but the vibrations cancel. By putting it in its own enclosure, you make sure it, the air inside the enclosure doesn't vibrate the wall. So now you have a quiet element. Now the first obvious thing is that really doesn't look like a subwoofer. And you're quite right, it doesn't look like a subwoofer. But in the same way that a powerful engine consists of one or two pistons uh, multiplied many times, we have a system now where we take 48 of these. So we take 48 small drivers, say they're about that, 100 millimeters, you end up with a radiating area that's equivalent to two 18-inch drivers. So you're beginning to get serious about wanting to, to make some bass. So we, we, we did some prototyping on this, found a partner, which was uh, BG Radio. And uh, we said, we can design you a subwoofer that will do this. Um, is there any magic here? Not really, but if you make a box very small and you still want lots of bass because you're not going to give up, you have to you have to work harder, and work harder means you have to have a big amplifier. So what happens here is we have these arranged in groups of 12 like that, so they're about that wide and they'll fit in between the studs in, a, in an American drywall, um, and they're about that long, something like 700 millimeters long. Um, and you have four of them. And the great thing about four of them is that you can spread them around the room. We talked a little earlier about it's where the subwoofer goes. Well. An interesting phenomenon is that if you have more than one subwoofer, sometimes you can find better places for them that what, what they do is they get rid of the cancellation. So it's instead of having two speakers creating standing waves, you can actually smooth it out by having more of them. So we have four of these, that's four lots of 12, 48 little drivers, and then, then we just have a little bit of power to drive it. The, the, it's uh, 2400 watts, so 2400 watts, Drivers like this, you can get realistic bass. It'll go right down to 20 hertz, and it'll meet our Ultra 2 uh, requirement, um, which is really difficult to do. So it goes way down to 20. But the total volume that occupied by these is, is tiny. It's about a sort of 15-inch cube, or you know, 200 and uh, what's that, 340 millimeters, something of that order. Um, so you can make it small, you can make it full band and it's resonant free, it doesn't drive the walls and so forth. So um, that's been out, I think, probably for a couple of years or something like that. And uh, what's nice about it is that you get what I would describe as tuneful bass. So if you know what the notes are, you can actually pick them out. It isn't just about 
Biff Bang Wallop. It's, it's about a nice, even, smooth bass. So I guess the, the next big major hot potato in audio is uh, auto EQ that we find on most AVRs and processors these days. So what's THX's view on, on that type of technology? Well, there's no doubt that if you want to get the ultimate out of the low frequency performance of a speaker in a room, EQ is a good thing. But it's also difficult. It involves you making accurate measurements, interpreting what they mean, and then applying some EQ to the system. So it has to be done with a degree of caution. The danger here is that if, let's suppose you had a dip in the response, for example, and you didn't quite know what to do about it, you might think, well, I'll fill it in. Well, that's fine, providing the speaker can uh, stand the extra input, providing the amplifier can give it, and providing it makes the sound better. Uh, one of the problems with, uh, with microphones is they're not ears. We don't hear in the same way that a microphone does. So you have to be very careful about EQ, and there are some automated systems that are claimed to be uh, quite good, but it's important to realize they'll really only work up to about 120 hertz, and you may be a fifth above the, uh, above the top end of a, of a, of a, a bass speaker or a subwoofer. So you have to be very careful about it, and I would say, if in doubt, trust your ears. We're actually pretty good at assessing the balance of sound. So in the same way when you're playing with room placement and you play and you say it's less boomy or more boomy and you're playing a piece, I think you're gonna find that with EQ. It's not a free lunch, it is an automatic. Unfortunately, the ear and the, and the, and the brain doesn't listen and interpret in the same way as a microphone. At its best, it'll do a better job but you should use it with caution. If you find your EQ is very, is very extreme, either with a cut or anything, then you've probably overdone it. It just wants to be just enough of a, of a tweak to make the bass sound nice and easy and fundamentally music-like. I think that's the key thing. Sorry, there's no easy answer to that. It's, it's, um, it's one of these things where, um, do you think there's a danger that, that people, when they see these auto EQ systems on, on these AVRs, think they can plonk the, the speakers down anywhere in the room and, and this magic auto system is going to sort it all out for them? Uh, there's two things an auto EQ won't do. It won't turn a bad speaker into a good speaker. So you absolutely got to, if you, you've got to have a good speaker before you start. There's nothing you can do about it. You can have a bad room and so under those circumstances it can help. But usually it's a combination of where you put it as well as how you EQ it. So do the best you can without touching it. It certainly is an automatic, that's absolutely for sure. And if you had several systems and put them in the same room and asked them to, to put your room right, you find they all come up with different answers. So either all the answers are right or they're not. Um, so keep it simple, I, it would be my advice to somebody. And, and use your ears, just listen to what's going on. Okay, so we hope you've uh, enjoyed our look at the uh, subwoofer placing the subwoofer and discussing room EQ with Laurie here. Thank you very much for your time. It's been a pleasure Thanks speaking to you. Thanks, it's been fun. It's Thanks. great. Thanks. Bye-bye.